Good morning or good midday, Stitch Roadies. Well, I decided to take a moment and catch up on, on remembering what has happened in the last week and share it with you. Um, we are in the midst of rain and sun and rain and sun. Um, I'm hoping to get out in between the showers and plant some seeds that I that have sprouted. I planted them, if you've seen on Instagram, I love the cooking and gardening um, tips on Instagram. Oh, by the way, this is a channel about cross-stitch. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I planted seeds in... Uh, toilet paper tubes that I had saved. I put dirt in there and planted and they sprouted and so I'm going to in between the rain showers run out there and stick them in the ground. And also feed uh, you know feed the squirrels is what I'm planning on doing this afternoon. Anyway um, what has been going on this week? I, I received the most incredible lamp uh, from the Fat Quarter Shop, and I have to show you the box it came in. It is humongous. Oh, oh, oh. It's empty, that's why I can lift it. It's a daylight lamp. And I immediately, when I saw it, thought, what a beautiful, beautiful lamp. And it has everything one might like. So I'm going to pick the camera up here and just kind of flip you around and show you. Oh, did you take your Dramamine? Okay, so here I have it set up. It is absolutely beautiful. So you just press the button to turn the light on and it just lights the space up. You can hold your cell phone if you're watching something or for those who record with the cell phone and can figure out how to do it themselves, this is a way to do it. And then it has a tray that spins around and has three compartments. And then on top of that, it has a magnifying glass. Yes. And so now it's not it's going to be a piece of cake to do that 56 count. Um so I have been figuring out where I want to use it, how I want to use it and have been enjoying so much this uh it's by daylight, but daylight, you know, I have um a couple of different daylight lamps that are modern looking. This kind of reminds me of something that belongs in a library. So you go over to Fat Quarter Shop and you take a look at it and see if you like it. Okay, so now I'm going to flip you over and put the camera down. Don't get too dizzy. Here we go. Here I am. <laughs> Sorry about that little travel. Um, I went to Stitch Goop at Acorns and Threads and I picked up um, some haul that I had waiting there. And that was my friend Sarah uh, had completed this project and she did it on the most fantastic fabric kind of a purple kind of fabric, but I knew right away that I was going to have to do this one. The really funny thing is at Stitch Group, here we go, I'm going to just give you a close-up of that. It's called The Haunted Library. Oh my gosh, yes. Everything was yes about this. What was really funny, um, which I didn't find out till later that evening when um, one of the stitchers that I hang out with uh, texted me and said, you know, the designer was there at Stitch Group. <laughs> I had no clue. I had no clue. So now I'm really interested in spending some time getting to know her if she ever does come back, because she may not come back. Um, because... 
She was so nice and sweet. And then look at this haunted library. Wow. Yeah. That's going to be great. So I did pick up this chart. I had pre-ordered it. And Janine got it in for me. And then in the new pile was um, this one. And it totally cracked me up by the artsy housewife. Beach Rat. Now there's two... There's two... Um, there's two options. See, one with the words and one without the words. And I'm thinking that my um, classmate from high school that lives down near the beach needs to be making this, Danielle. I'm talking to you. Um, <laughs> I was immediately drawn to this because when I was a kid, um, just a decade or so ago, uh, I was out on a playground and one of these beach rats pooped right on my head. Yeah. Yeah. But it just totally cracked me up. So I am, this is a sooner than later. I know. My list is full. But it was such a nice um, stitch group. And that's one of the things you might want to sign up on uh, Acorns and Threads newsletter and check out their calendar off of their website because she regularly has open stitch groups um, which is just you know it's so um, relaxing and fun to be with people who are as passionate about what you are in the cross stitch world and there's such a wide variety of um, different genres of cross stitch that are so fun and it's fun to just chit chat and talk and hang out together um, so uh, check out that calendar and come join us sometime I've been doing you know it's kind of flipped over to May and so now I am looking at my check boxes for uh, my book of days. Although, when I went down to a retreat, um, the one of the hosts of the retreat, or the workshop, I should say, uh, spiral bound hers and added extra pages and I'm going to do that next year because I really liked having that that ability to flip it open and to have extra pages to do things on but we are into May and so I am already starting to fill up some stars and it always makes me feel good when I have stars to to um, give myself yeah, always fun to give myself some stars. I, let's see, I just took out yesterday my um, Halloween, because I want to stitch on a ha my Halloween project until it's done. And this is from the Fat Quarter Shop, Tiny Modernist Halloween Calendar, and it was a PDF that I purchased and I like to get one square done a month and so now I'm working on isn't that mummy just so cute he's so cute so I probably by the end of today will have that mummy done and we'll be able to put a star put a star by my Halloween box and my designated stitch was by Sambri Stitches, Adventure Sampler, and I made uh, I made a change. So what I decided to do, here it is. Let's see. I'm going to put it on the back of this. Um, you see how some of those things just don't show up. Some of the motifs. That's what was happening to the border. And, I mean, I can see it, but it takes... I might do a back stitch around my um, 
I almost said woolly mammoth <laughs> around my around my big foot. Not my big foot, but this big foot. Um, I might do a back stitch around them just to make them show up a little bit better. But I decided not to do the border. It was um, a lot of start and stops on the border, and it wasn't showing up that much. And so what I'm going to do is when I finish this, I'm going to do kind of like a flat fold and put some real pretty trim around the flat fold and make it uh, where it can hang in the van. So I'm getting pretty close because all I have left is the house, which is, I already started it. It's just that you, you can't see it that well. And then the a deer and a tree over here. But yeah, see that that um, Bigfoot just has a hard time. The white really pops on here, but um, I think I'll just use a maybe a darker brown to backstitch around it. But this is almost another designated stitch done, which means then I get to pick another one. And... Um, I really, I'm going to do that in 2025 also. It really has made a difference in in getting some of my projects off that whip list. At the May uh, 2nd, I think it was May 2nd, that we um, met at Acorns and Threads, um, a few of us are doing the 12 monthly and um, Janine has this in the shop, and I am now um, on May. And the May, oh, the May pillow, very cute, very cute. And so there's my one little flower. And I received just this gorgeous, gorgeous scissor fob from a friend. Isn't that gorgeous? Her husband made these. And, and I have the, oh, the other one I have in my stitching box. And it's um, the motifs off of the Korean flag. And it's just gorgeous. I have that on the way. I did a little bit of stitching. I love this uh, project. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find it the picture so I don't have to flash the chart. Hmm. Well, I don't know where the front page went to. I know it's in here somewhere, but there's so many pages to this chart. It's the Summer Quaker, and oh, I fell in love with it the first time I saw it. Oh, it's probably on the stand in the music room. Oh no, maybe this is it. Yeah, here it is. Summer Quaker. Oh. It has everything that reminds me of my childhood. It's so, although there wasn't a lighthouse on the bay we were on. There wasn't a lighthouse. There was a, um, you know, foghorn that was warning you. But I just love everything about this. It reminds me so much of my childhood and let's see where I have gotten. I am approaching it. I'm doing it with the called for colors on 36 count Edinburgh linen from Acorns and Threads and I decided to do it by the border and then I think I'm going to fill in that border and then move down. So absolutely lovely this um, it's gonna look fantastic on this 
have it in this out. very gorgeous bee bag. Little bee charm there. Okay, where are we? You can tell I went to workshop uh, down in Central Oregon and I still have not caught up on on my sleep. Well, you know why. I I spent most of that time laughing and I was with um, Cheryl with Stitching with the Sisterlies and Audrey, Stitchy Witch 42. Um, we went down together and um, the workshop itself was at Cynthia's Sewing Center. And there were many people there that I um, used to stitch with in the quilting world and the cross-stitch world. And it was fun to see everybody, but the whole workshop that was put on by Kate um, from Cynthia Sewing Center and Linda, a.k.a. Van, uh, Van Mom, um, was just nothing but a good time. It was a one day, which was perfect. It was one day. Um, we were given this bag that Kate made, all bee themed. And it had a little charm with a bee in 2024. I mean, she made each of us a bag. And our <clears throat> project was this, designed by Linda and Kate. And I, I you know, I haven't made the uh, box or the button holder, but I got the little tin box done. You know, there's nothing that makes you feel successful is to go to a workshop and walk out and within a day you have a totally fringe. Some people finish the project at the workshop. Um, if I hadn't um, if I hadn't talked so much maybe I could have done that but I did get it done by the time uh, One Day Home was. So here's these little tin boxes and they were old collectible, um, they actually held laxatives. <laughs> I know, that was so funny. And then we were given fabric to glue to the top and wool to the bottom. And then we were given all the materials to make this needle minder, fabric covered button needle minder. And then we were, uh, we stitched the top of it and we're given all of the craft objects we needed to make this little flat fold and trim so that this cute little box i mean I, to to actually have finished something is, is so i'm so proud of myself i'm so proud of myself but I'm, I'm babbling a little bit because I'm so, still so tired. I mean, you travel with Audrey and Cheryl, and it's like you're laughing all the time. And then you're in a workshop where, I'm, I'm telling you, I have never laughed so much. I think my abs got more workout in that weekend than um, going to the gym. And... Uh, I still haven't recovered. You can tell I'm still tired. I'm still tired. The other thing we received made by one of the classmates of ours was this absolutely, first there's this little spool needle minder, old spool, and it has a, um, a button or a magnetic thing glued on the top so it holds your needle. And then we were gifted this little bird, and she put a washer 
in the bottom. So the little bird, um, oh, let me see, I got my needle on there. Little bird stays on there uh, because of the magnet. Isn't that the cutest thing? I mean, and we each got one. It was like so, so amazing. Came in this cute little ba bag. Um, we were given lunch and snacks and drinks. Um, not alcoholic drinks, because we would have got nothing done. Although, people walking by um, would probably wondered if we were not having an alcoholic drink. We were just laughing like a like we were at a bar. We were just howling. Um, yeah. So Cynthia's Sewing Center is more on the south side of Bend. And um, it's in like a, um, like a strip mall or a business mall area. And so Cynthia's Sewing Center is at one end and the classroom is located at the other. And it has so much lighting and um, it was a perfect place to uh, cross stitch. Absolutely perfect. <sighs> Being with Cheryl and Audrey was a, a laugh a minute. And um, so the evening of the workshop, we decided to go to uh, McMinimans, um, St. Francis McMinimans in Bend. And for those of you that are not from the Pacific Northwest, the McMinimans, um, and I know I've shared this with you before, the McMinimans um, chain, it's not really a chain because it's so unusual, um, was originally started by two brothers who were uh, beer truck drivers. You know, they delivered the Coors or the Heineken or whatever to bars and stores. And they decided to start opening their own um, establishments. And they did it in a very unusual way in terms of that they bought... Uh, most of them. Now you will find some of them in a shopping area, but most of them are uh, in old schools, um, sanatoriums, hospitals. Uh, the Crystal Ballroom was in is in an old hotel in downtown Portland. There's they're kind of the Pacific Northwest, and it has a very unusual. Um, I guess what you'd say is that, uh, you know, like Nike has an emblem that you know right away that that's, that's Nike, you know. Um, my daughter-in-law's father was one of the original artists that kind of branded that um, business. And so his artwork is very recognizable. Um, in the Pacific Northwest. And so Cheryl and Audrey were all game to go to the McMinimans that was in Bend, Oregon at St. Francis School. And so here I am, I'm wearing the t-shirt, St. Francis School, Bend, Oregon. Um, because that was the grammar school that my younger son attended. And when they uh, they decided to move St. Francis out east to the east side of Bend and build a whole new school, um, the McMinimans brothers uh, bought that school in downtown Bend and turned it into a hotel. And um, it has several bars and restaurants located on that um school grounds. And so it was fun to go there and share uh, with Audrey and Cheryl where my son went to school in downtown Bend at one point. Yeah, his kindergarten classroom is now the distillery. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, and, and at the end of this video, I'll um, have G attach some of Lyle's work, his paintings. I took pictures of the paintings that I saw uh, as I walked around the school, and um, we'll attach some of those at the end. They're quite unusual, quite unusual. He was an amazing artist and is very much missed, not only by his family, but in the art community. So we had fun having dinner there. Um, we just kind of laid around and stitched and laughed and uh, I dropped we went to a quilt shop called the Quilt Basket in Bend because I had three quilts that I wanted to be quilted, custom quilted, um, by the long arm quilter who works out of uh, the Quilt Basket, and that was Sandy Lakowski. And so, if you ever need a custom quilted quilt, it is um, she's. She does an amazing job. So I dropped three quilts down there, and of course, um, Audrey has no interest in that, so she had quite an interesting conversation with a gentleman who was sitting there waiting, and Cheryl naturally bought some kits. I don't know if I was supposed to say that. Anyway, fun time. Fun time. And it was great to meet up with my... Um, some of my fabric stalker girlfriends. We had a great time uh, talking. And then the drive home. Y you know, it's May. Um, so the drive should be a no-brainer. A week ago, or two weeks previously, when I went down for quilt retreat, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous, clear day driving down. This time, it was uh, snow and slush and rain and I was like I, and I had never I checked trip check I'm babbling here a little bit but I checked a uh, trip check uh, how the road was to head home and there were four accidents on that highway I had never seen that and then one accident totally closed the highway for several hours um, <sighs> poor people Poor people. So um, it was not bad. The drive home was not bad. I have um, winter rated tires on my car, so it uh, my car never even acted squirrely on the road, um, which was great. And they always um, put de-icer, and we have an overabundance of lava rock on that side of the mountain, and so they... they crush it up and then there was red rock um, scattered along the highway all the way home. So it was fun to come home. Uh, we had a great time and now I have a couple of more stitchy days ahead with friends here in the Portland area and I'm going to try to keep working away at my list of whips for this year. I really want to start this um, the Haunted Library, though, oh, it's so amazing. It is just so amazing. Yeah. Um, so that's it. I think, I think I've covered it all. So if you're interested, check out the Fat Quarter Shop for this daylight lamp. Oh my gosh, is this thing, it's a beautiful lamp and so functional. I, I can, you know, um, listen to my book. I can watch, you know, um, YouTube. Everything is right here. And the light is fantastic, and it weighs. It's not like it. Uh, it's not going to move. It is not going to move. So, okay, I think I've I think I've covered as much as I can remember to cover. <laughs> now I need a nap. <laughs> you take care. Love you guys, and we'll see you the next time. Oh, I forgot. The Fat Quarter Shop is offering you a $35 gift card. So, if you're interested, 
in the comments, use the word lamp. Okay, I still love you guys, and we'll see you next time.